for, for the specific characteristics of flax fiber, you could actually do uh, heat transfer calculations in order to determine how rapid this radiation burst has to be. But it, you know, if, if, it, if it's a microsecond, if it's a nanosecond, it's probably somewhere down in that range in order to create uh, this extremely thin discolored layer uh, on the fibers. So what I'm saying is that the Shroud of Turin has baffled believers and scientists for centuries. But just recently, nuclear engineer Robert Rocker published some results that change everything. His latest findings confirm something incredible about the Shroud and it's about to blow your mind. Robert Rocker is turning his attention to the Shroud of Turin. Would you expect that from a nuclear engineer? Probably not. This ancient artifact has sparked debates for decades and many people are interested in learning the real story behind it. In this video, Rocker takes us on a journey to explore some of its biggest mysteries. And trust me, his findings are astonishing. But before I get to the details, we need to understand a little bit more about Robert's background. When asked about how he became interested in the Shroud, Rocker explained that it began with a small image in a Sunday magazine that was only an inch high. It showed the face on the shroud with a caption suggesting that some believed it to be Jesus' burial cloth. Rocker admitted that his first reaction was pure disbelief. He thought to himself, if this were real, why wasn't everyone talking about it? His curiosity overcame him and he began reading books about the shroud whenever he had free time but it stayed in the background of his life for years until the results of the 1988 carbon dating revealed that the shroud was only roughly 700 years old. He had a gut feeling that something wasn't right. Based on his knowledge, he said, those results just didn't add up. He studied the technical specifics years later and found something strange. The dates didn't match across different samples. The piece of cloth that was closest to the edge had the oldest date while the samples that were further in were progressively newer. You wouldn't typically see this linear progression with an ordinary piece of cloth. It was obvious that something strange was happening. Rocker realized that he would need powerful computer technology to investigate further, but that wasn't available until 2013. Since then, he has been committed to solving the mystery of the Shroud. He explained that the cloth measures 14 and a half feet long and three and a half feet wide, but what really makes it fascinating is the image on it. It looks just like a negative photograph. It turns into a positive image when viewed in a camera negative, a detail that no medieval painter could have understood, much less reproduced. Let's examine the shroud from both the front and the back views in detail, and here's where things get truly amazing. On the front, you can clearly see the arms stretched out, with nails piercing through the wrists, not the palms. Why is that? Because the wrist's bone structure is sufficient to support weight. There's also blood running down the arms, almost as if the person is in a crucified position. You can see the face, scourge marks on the legs and even nail cuts on the feet. Also, there are water stains from a fire in 1532 when people risked their lives to save the shroud. They left these stains on a silver box they kept it in after soaking it with water. And those burn marks on the cloth's two sides? That's because of the extreme heat during that same fire. Now, when you flip to the back image, it becomes even more detailed. The back of the skull has puncture marks, most likely from a crown of thorns. The shoulders is abrasion. Marks suggest that they were carrying something rough and heavy perhaps a cross. The front altar has an oval wound that's the same size as a Roman thrusting spear. Small of the back is covered in blood and the feet have rotated nails that suggest rigor mortis, which says the person was definitely dead. But let's take a pause for a moment because I'm about to reveal some of Robert's most incredible evidence in just a moment. So if you're not prepared for some controversial finds, please stop watching right now. One of the most interesting things about the shroud is that the blood naturally separates into red blood cells and clear serum. 
And every mark, every single characteristic corresponds with Jesus' crucifixion. Isn't that incredible? But how could they have produced these images in the past if the shroud is as old as the 1988 carbon dating indicates between 1260 and 1390? They lacked the necessary technology. In fact, we can't even duplicate it today with today's advanced computers and lasers. So how did they manage it in the Middle Ages? That's the million dollar question. If it is really Jesus' burial shroud, some believe the figures on it might have been created at the time of his resurrection. But why did the carbon dating suggest that the shroud was created between 1260 and 1390? Robert Rucker set out to solve that puzzle by applying his 38 years of expertise in computer modeling, radiation shielding, and nuclear analysis. He claims that his life seems to have been arranged just right to solve this mystery, and guess what? He thinks he's figured it out. We'll now discuss the history of the Shroud. The majority of scholars agree that it most likely made its way from Jerusalem to Antioch before continuing on to other places. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 even mentions it, indicating that it was used for early Christian apologetics. Some say it went by land, while others assume it traveled by sea before arriving in France, where it was on exhibit as Jesus' burial linen in 1536. The image of the shroud's face is particularly fascinating. You can even make out teeth because it's that detailed. How could something like that happen? Can you believe that whatever created the image had to send information from the body to a cloth through an air gap? Mind blowing, right? According to historical accounts, the shroud was rediscovered in the 500s after being concealed during persecution, most likely in Antioch. Prior to that, many pictures of Jesus lacked facial hair in order to imitate the shaven looks of Roman soldiers and rulers. When the shroud was rediscovered, the detailed image of the face became a huge inspiration for Byzantine art. It's actually what shaped the way most of us picture Jesus today with a beard, a long nose, deep-set eyes, and that classic middle part of his hair. Beginning in 692 AD, it even appeared on coins. With a picture of Jesus Christ in place of the emperor, one coin boldly read, Jesus Christ, King of Kings. There was evidence that the shroud existed far older than the carbon dating data, that suggested it was created between 1260 and 1390. For example, we have antique Latin written sermons and even a color illustration from the period 1192 to 1195. Jesus is seen in this artwork with three men, John, Joseph, and Nicodemus, and a nimbus or a halo surrounding his head. Here's the interesting part. The illustration also shows the burial shroud with three L-shaped burn holes on it. These same burn marks show up in four different places on the shroud. How did they get there? The theory is that someone might have accidentally spilled some hot coals onto the folded cloth, causing it to burn through layer by layer. And if that's true, it's another clue tying the shroud to the past. This cloth is also found in a Hungarian manuscript called Prey, named after its discoverer. It links the shroud to a previous era and presents a compelling argument against the carbon dating findings. Fast forward to 1203 and you'll find a historical reference to the shroud in Constantinople. It was raised for display every Friday so that people might see the picture of Jesus on it. Some people assume that someone was operating a pulley system underneath the platform to produce this breathtaking display. The shroud first appeared in France in 1355 or 56, and in 1578 it finally arrived in Turin, Italy. It's now kept in the local cathedral. Occasionally it's put up on display, but these public displays are rare, usually only a handful each year. The Shroud of Turin research projects conducted a thorough scientific test on the shroud in 1978. This team of 26 scientists worked non-stop for five days, conducting non-destructive tests to find out how the image was made. Can you guess what they found? There are no brush strokes, pigment, stiff cloth, 
or cracking along fold lines, indicating that the image is not created with paint, dye or stain. Unlike real scotch marks on the shroud, this one does not glow in black light, hence it's also not a scotch mark. The image incorporates three-dimensional data, which is something that no ordinary painting or photograph can accomplish. This is where it becomes even more astounding. Only the top two or three fibers of each thread exhibit the discoloration that creates the image, giving it a sapia or straw yellow tone. The image is not even visible up close. You must stand back approximately eight feet to view it. So what could possibly cause such a precise discoloration? It's one of the most confusing features of the shroud. Here's the quick breakdown. One shroud fiber is only one-fifth the diameter of a human hair. Interestingly, the image on the shroud is created by a discoloration that's unbelievably thin, limited to the very outer layer of the fibers. To put it in perspective, it's only 0.2 to 6 micrometers thick, which is about equivalent to a wavelength of light. What's fascinating is that the inside of the fiber hasn't been affected at all. There's no liquid that soaked through, no capillary action. How did that even happen? However, tests have revealed that the shroud is not only a photograph, but the imprint of a real human body, specifically the body of a man who was crucified. Hemoglobin and serum albumin tests confirmed that the blood on the cloth is real, definitely not an artist's creation. The infamous carbon dating comes next. A small sample was taken from the most handled corner. Results from labs in Arizona, Zurich and Oxford dated it to the medieval era, but here's the twist. That part might not even represent the entire shroud. Here are the statistics. Samples from Oxford, Zurich and Tuxin were dated at 1200, 1273 and 1303 respectively. Have you noticed anything? As you approach the center of the cloth, the number of dates increases. Ignoring that slope, they simply average the results to get 1260. Rucker used Gaussian contribution to calculate the numbers and he obtained 1277 plus or minus 12.6, which is somewhat higher and more accurate. The shocking part is that the lab's findings varied by almost three sigma, highlighting a statistically significant difference. According to the trend, you would receive even more recent dates if you sampled further in. A 5% significance level is normal for statistical analysis. The carbon dating team used it, and to their surprise, they received precisely 5%. But when Rucker ran the numbers using a Gaussian distribution, he got 1.4%. Since the data points to a systematic error, you would reject it outright at that level. The reason is that the control sample showed far higher consistency, 90, 50, and 30%, while the shroud's numbers were scattered. For example, the stated value was 31, while Rocker's investigation found an average of 17.05 for toxin. That's a huge difference! And get this, the complete data was not made public until a lawsuit forced its release in 2017. Following its publication, four peer-reviewed studies came to a unanimous conclusion. The carbon dating of the shroud just doesn't add up. The findings are unpredictable and unreliable. The bottom line is that there is no scientific evidence to support the carbon dating that placed the shroud's age between 1260 and 1390. A number of modern dating techniques, including the cutting-edge Wide-angle X-ray scattering method are much more consistent with Jesus' time, which is approximately 33 AD. These findings stand in stark contrast to the outdated carbon dating method. The image of the shroud is truly unique. Out of the billions of people who lived and died, we've never seen anything like this on other burial cloths. Just imagine, there's no evidence of similar images from ancient times, not even from well-preserved places like Egyptian tombs. If it were a natural phenomenon, you'd expect something like this to pop up somewhere else, right? Scientists have even wrapped a dead pig in linen to test this under controlled conditions. The result? Not an image, just flies. What about those Egyptian mummies? Their burial cloths have existed for a longer period of time than the shroud, but they too lack images. 
The Shroud will always be one of the most fascinating mysteries of history until someone discovers another burial shroud just like this one. <laughs>